In today's lecture, we're going to look at moving beyond just linearizing the equations of motion themselves and look at the linearization of forces and moments. And also the non dimensionalization. Plus, we're going to look at one more axis system and the transformations needed for it, which will greatly simplify our analysis, which are stability axes and the various derivatives in stability axes. So we're already used to thinking about force and moment coefficients for airfoils and wings. So, you know, CL for an airfoil or a wing or CD for an airfoil or a wing. And while we didn't discuss it as much in this course, uh, you can similarly define the moment coefficient for an airfoil or wing. Now, since the forces and moments we've used in developing our flight dynamics equations are x, y, z, and l, m, and n, it's convenient to define non-dimensional coefficients for these quantities as well. So Cx will be defined as x divided by Qs, where s is our reference area, and Q is the dynamic pressure, which I'll talk about in a moment. Cy, y over Qs, Z z over qs, cl is l over, now this is a moment so the units are different, qs for the x-axis roll moment, the length scale of interest is the span b for cm, which is the y-axis or well, pitching moment, the length scale of interest is the chord, and for the yaw moment, again, the length scale of interest is the span. So S is the reference area, B is the reference span, and C is the reference chord. We use Q for the free stream dynamic pressure because, uh, capital Q, I should say, because lowercase q infinity is, uh, sort of already used since we use lowercase q for the pitch rate. So the dynamic pressure is one half rho v squared, which is one half rho u squared plus v squared plus o u squared. So since we now have force and moment coefficients, we want to have non-dimensional versions of velocity, flow angle, and angular velocity perturbations as well. So we can start with the x velocity. Non-dimensional version will be, uh, have a bar over top, and we'll define this as delta u over u bar. So this is the perturbation. And this is the trim value. For the side slip angle, we're talking about the change in tan inverse of v over the square root of u squared plus w squared, which looks complicated, but for small angles, and remember we're considering only small perturbations, then tan inverse of x is just x. So delta beta is just delta v over the square root of u naught plus delta u squared plus delta w squared. But because this is a perturbation and it's a squared value, this is small and can be neglected, and the same goes here. 
So we can get that delta beta is approximately just delta V over U naught. And similarly, we get that, well, delta alpha is technically delta of change in tan inverse W over U. We can approximate that as delta W over U naught. For the angular velocities, we can define delta P bar as delta of P B over 2 V. This provides appropriate non dimensionalization. And this can be approximated as delta P times B over 2 U naught. And so also then delta Q bar, which is delta QC over 2V, is approximately just delta Q times C over 2U naught. And finally delta R bar is approximately delta R times B over 2U naught. We also need the perturbation in dynamic pressure. So delta Q is the change in one half rho u squared plus v squared plus w squared. And we can approximate that as rho times, assuming incompressible flow, u naught delta u plus v naught delta v plus w naught delta w. And this is because taking the derivatives here we get 2u uh, du and the 2 and the 1 half cancel. Now v naught is small and delta v is small and w naught and delta w are both small so this is just rho u naught delta u. Now we can manipulate this further and since q naught is one half rho u naught squared essentially because delta v or v naught and u naught will be zero for a trim state, then we could say that delta q is approximately 2q delta u over u naught. And if we want to check this to make sure that we're comfortable with it, we can write it out and write 2 1 half rho u naught squared delta u over u naught. The square cancels here, the one half cancels the two, and we get rho u naught delta u, which is exactly what we have here. Now we have everything that we need to determine the perturbations in the force and moment coefficients.